find your work fascinating. <laughs> I think it's very um, difficult, I guess, uh, to mm-hmm. do what you do, to, to have the judgment of how something on paper, let's call it on paper, will actually look good on the screen. Tell me a little bit more about how you started doing that and why. When I left college, uh, I started working in a bank in the city of London. Uh, I worked as an assistant. I didn't really, I knew that I didn't want to be at school anymore, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, And then after a couple of years in the bank, I thought, well, this is not where I really want to be. So what intrigued me was the idea of media, generally. Um, And at the time in London, it was quite easy to, to work as a temp secretary, as a temporary assistant in lots of different companies. So I just... I uh, started doing that and I worked uh, a publisher's advertising, the music business. And then I worked at a film company called Majestic Films and Television. And one day the head of marketing there just dropped a script in front of me. And it was uh, Blood and Wine. Blood and Wine would star Jack Nicholson and Michael Caine. And he said, read this and tell me what you think. And that for me was sort of a light bulb moment of reading that script and it's coming to life. But what I did with through that temping was, you know, I took a job then that got me into the company. And once I was in, it was easier to move around. And within a year or so of being at Majestic Films, they'd sold the company to another group uh, who then sold the company again to Icon, which at the time uh, was uh, Mel Gibson and Bruce Davies production company. They decided to set up an international sales business. And that was so that they could, you know, they were developing and producing movies out of their offices in LA, but they were also looking at third party uh, movies. So during my eight years at ICOM, the international sales company in London may, I think, got involved with about 33 films. And obviously a lot of those were not Mel Gibson movies. We did the Spice Girls movie. We did a movie called Karen and Perry. We did an Asami Goyen movie, Felicia's Journey. I was one of the first people that anybody coming to the company with a script uh, would meet. So I was, you know, meeting writers, producers, directors, and then going out to see agents and producers because we were looking for films that the company could bring their expertise in sales and financing to. Um, And so that that, uh, I always felt that 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 was what I really enjoyed. You know, the creative side, the reading those scripts, imagining would this make a good movie? What's going to happen to this when you take it out into the marketplace? How did Zero Gravity come into the picture? I was working at Icon and then I moved on to another company, Odyssey Entertainment, where I was overseeing acquisitions. And again, this was another international, a very small startup, international sales company. Uh, And my role there was to you know, go out and look for projects that we could set up um, as an international sales business. So I was always meeting with producers and I was doing that in London, but also in the United States. I was going to LA as well quite often to meet with the agents and uh, producer and filmmaker community there. And it was an agent actually at ICM who said to me probably 20 years ago, you should meet a producer called Mark Williams. And Mark is, you know, one half of Zero Gravity. He's, he's the management side, uh, production side of Zero Gravity. And his brother, Elliot Whit- Williams, is, is the management side of the business. So Mark and I have known each other for about 20 years. We've always kept in touch. I liked the way he worked as a producer. Uh, I liked the projects that he was developing. We'd always read the scripts that he would send over to us. And then um, a few while I was working at Odyssey, I met a young filmmaker called Chris Foggin. He did a short film with Judy Dench, um, friend request pending, and I was sent that film. And so I asked to meet Chris because I just thought I could see immediately what kind of filmmaker I thought he could become. 
Uh, I was I was working at the sales company at the time, but I wanted to meet him and wanted to see what he want to do, what did he want to do next, and how he got that together. How do you get Judy Dench in a short film? Yeah, that's not a, a simple thing. Yeah, I, I I introduced him to people, and he would tell me what he was doing, and occasionally send me scripts. Um, and then he did a movie called Fisherman's Friends that did very well in the UK, and then was doing very well on its international rollout. And I introduced him to Zero Gravity. And that began a conversation with me and Mark about looking for other writer director talent outside of, you know, outside of the States, maybe from the UK and Europe, um, who might be interested in management. So it, it, it's been four years now of slowly building um, a, a list of writer and director clients. But I can see with my writers and directors how all of that knowledge I have from the international sales side of the business in indie film is very useful when you're talking to your clients about what stories they want to tell or you know scripts they've written and how we can ultimately position those in the market if you under if, if you're a filmmaker it's interesting to understand the sales and distribution side of the business and if you're in your or, or the marketing you know because it's all all everything has to come together sometimes as a writer or a filmmaker you're so close to a project you know the ins and outs, you know the characters, you know their backstories, you know everything about them. And yet when the script goes to somebody else for the first time, they might ask questions that you think, oh, well, I, you know, I know that because I, kn I know my backstory, I know my characters. But, you know, it's trying to, OK, but they're not getting it. If they're not getting it and if enough people, you know, if you have five people read and five people come back with the same comment, something's not working yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know it's 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 a collaborative industry i agree and i really appreciate your time today <laughs> thank, thank you thank you